Yep, so we tested the alternator at O'Reilly's. It indeed was bad. So I'll show a picture of that now. Other than that, I start with the top bolt first. We tried to do this one handed. In from the top, slide it down, good to go. On top, you want to hold on to this bracket as you're getting it started. That would be a pain if you lost that one. Luckily the EJ25 is a little bigger so it'd probably be much easier to find. Next one, the adjustment bolt. I'm going to bring it all the way up. We'll wait to tighten that down because you need to put the jack bolt in for the final adjustment. We can get that adjustment started. We'll leave it loose till we get the belt back on. Which we'll do right now. Subaru belt's pretty straightforward. Now when you're setting a tension on these, you want about a tenth play. Okay. Now you can't tighten any of these bolts until you get your adjustment done. Because once these are tight, there's no more adjustment. It's wherever it's going to be. There is no tensioner in the Subaru system. It's manual tensioners, they're not automatic. Now that we're happy where the belt is, we're going to do the bottom adjustment first, and then we'll do the top. These are not tight adjustments, about 25 foot-pounds, if that. Because this bolt literally goes through to the other side of the alternator. All right, your load wire back up. I don't see any problem with the charge wire. Get that on the other side. Now you don't want to over tighten this, but you do want it tight. When you over tighten it, you'll literally pull the post clean out through the other side. Alright, plug your regulator back in. Just about done. Okay, now we can tighten this one. This one we're going to want fairly tight. Get the air conditioning cover back on here, and we'll get the two final bolts. Just about done. Okay, these are 10 mils.
All right, let that sit for about five minutes. Not bad for just solvent. Eh, maybe we'll do that instead. Who wants to do all that scrubbing? All right, I'll give her another five minutes here. Yeah, this battery gonna take a while. Can't send it back to service till that battery's full though. It will void the warranty. And we don't void warranties here. We like our local O'Reilly's. It's not even that old of a battery and it looks like it's ten years old. Wow. Superstart. Is that Walmart? Hmm. Maybe. All right, we're going to tear this connector apart see if we can't refurbish it. It's in pretty bad shape, but I think it's savable. First things first, we want to get this bolt off. We need to get this out of the way. There is a plastic spacer in here we do need to get out of the way so we can clean this terminal. Spread them apart. Take the plastic. Take it off. So you see that uh, calcification, electrolysis kind of looking stuff right here? That's got to go. You have that on there, and the battery is not going to be able to take in power nor give it out very well. Then the alternator won't be able to sense, and it makes the alternator just work harder than it really needs to. And it will leave you to a no-start situation like we have here. Cleaners, they work, but for this, I mean, good old sandpaper, some 220 grit. It'll clean up pretty quick on you. Use a little bit of battery cleaner. It'll take a couple minutes and after that, I mean, pretty much it's a new part again. You see we almost got the brassy color back. Okay, so I'm going to clean the bolt now. This stuff you can get at your local O'Reilly's or most auto parts stores. Unfortunately, these kind of bolts you can't get at O'Reilly's. Oh. You have to get them from the dealership. Mm -hmm. If they still make them. How old are they? Old. Okay, once you got everything clean, it's just a matter of snapping it all back together. Alright, we have to go do this to the negative, same procedure, I'm not going to show that, but pretty much that's how you get it done. 
All right, good news. Battery's full. It's kind of nice when you're building a Subaru. You just have one laying around and throw a battery in. I'll charge it up. I know, big deal. We'll get her going. This one's actually getting ready to get sent out. But anyways, time to throw this uh, reconditioned, almost new battery back in our Forester. Another car with no hold downs. How sad. I'm still kind of confused why they used a 3 8 inch bolt here, and every other Subaru I've worked on, it's been 10 here. And it's not normal for manufacturers to use two different size bolts. It's the only wrench I had that would actually fit the stripped bolt, so. This part I do by hand because I definitely wanted to know how this bolt's doing. You want it tight enough to where it's not going to move around. You'd be surprised how many drivability problems happen from loose battery cables. Except for I don't fit that one. <laughs> Get this one. Uh, oh, turn the light on. I think it's blinking. Why is it blinking? That is a good question. Is it, is it, is it, is it giving power? Well, it's definitely got power. <laughs> it's blinking. That better not happen all night long. I'll have a dead battery. I definitely wouldn't want that. How long is this going to last? I don't know, I'm going to figure out why that light's doing that. Yeah. Yeah, we're done with the battery. We'll put this neat little cover back on. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to throw some stuff from we got from O'Reilly's. It's uh, no corrode gel. Zoom in. Okay, I just want to give it a nice, good amount. You can give it kind of conservative amount. Get all liberal on this, and you might have a mess once the stuff gets hot. Just need a little bit to protect it. That's all. There's various uh, forms of this stuff, but I wanted to give the gel a go. So if we can't help them stop this uh, premature alternator death, of course, it'd probably be the first time or second alternator this thing was on. Of course, I couldn't find a remanufacturer sticker, so it might have been an actual factory original, two hundred fifteen thousand. Not bad. All right, we are ready to start this. You gonna start? It's gonna start. I want to hear it start. All right, we'll go we'll multimeter and we'll start it. Oh yeah! There we go. There we go. Fourteen five. Turn the lights on. And the bottom lights too. Alright folks, as you can see we got 14.5, Subaru's happy again, we're going to send it back off to its owner. Other than that, thanks for watching, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, we'll see you next time.